Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to BM Talks to them. Today BM we have talks to them. some of the girls from episode 23. I don't recognize none of these faces. I recognize her. She was being fake on the end. She's that fake one that was all the way on the right. Giving everybody compliments and she didn't like them. I recognize her. I recognize her. Uh, but I don't recognize the other three. Those are the straightest eyebrows I've ever seen in my life. All right, let's check them out, man. Let's see what, the, what these broads are talking about, man. These broads. These broads, mm -hmm. man. Um, the episode that everyone's talking about. Welcome, ladies. How you hey. feeling? Okay. Hey, hey. Hi. <laughs> right off the bat, they don't seem very friendly. Um, uh, she had the biggest smile. The rest of them was like kind of dry. Great, thanks for having us. Of mm -hmm. course, it's, it's nice to have you guys back. Um, obviously, as you guys saw from your episode, um, we had the men on. They got a chance to speak, say their piece, all that good stuff. So we're like, you know, it's only fair that we bring the ladies as well. So they can say their piece because a lot of the comments, you guys were pretty much under fire underneath that episode. Ain't nobody so like, like you You know what? Let's give them a chance so they can come back on. Maybe there's some things they want to address, whatever it may be. Get some stuff off your chest. This is a great moment for you guys to do so. So we just wanted to bring you on the platform and just hear from you guys. I hope you guys are ready. She got a lot on her chest. She yeah. Is. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I want to ask you is um, how did you find the experience so far? being on the show and how did you find it when you know when you saw the actual episode come out um how did you feel can i explain your experience and uh, let's start with uh renee renee um i had a fun experience i was surprised to see a lot of negative comments um i thought that we were a very nice episode no one was mean or we didn't have like a viral weird moment i thought that we you know we all made a group chat after like i thought we were cool but Turns out we weren't. <laughs> Wait, so you say you, you thought you didn't have a viral? Every, uh, no, like she means she means like they didn't have like some crazy yeah like you know, right, right, viral moment. Cool, you know. But I mean, as a whole though, the whole episode is a viral. It's like a viral moment. The whole episode, yeah, the episode you know? it was a good episode. I'm not, I'm saying like oh, where she go? Anyone that was disrespectful or had like some weird commentary or something, you know? All mm -hmm. the girls were respectful. The men we did. I like that episode is a viral like we didn't have anyone that was disrespectful or had like some weird commentary or something you know all mm -hmm. the girls were respectful the men we did have a nice lineup but we just didn't match up they just weren't our types mm, okay mm -hmm. okay so it looks like we lost christina but we'll continue when she comes back on we'll go ahead and pick up with her so we were hearing from kamina aka Haitian doll. <laughs> so yes, um, the experience was really fun. Um, I met a lot of amazing girls during the experience. I thought I met amazing friends as the guy side. I guess I was wrong with that. But other than that, watching the episode back, honestly, the negative comments don't really phase me. I mean, I was very respectful. I gave everybody a compliment before I turned them down. So I wasn't really too mean. So yeah, I liked watching it back and it showed my bubbly side. I was laughing a lot. So yeah. Okay. Okay. What about Carrington? A lot, so it's really too mean. So, yeah, I like watching the back and it's compliment before I turn them down. So I wasn't really too mean. So, yeah, I like watching the back and it showed my bubbly side. I was laughing a lot. So yeah. Okay. Okay. What about compliment before I turn them down? So I wasn't really too mean. So, yeah, I like watching. Jesus Christ, man. She needs a new makeup artist. <laughs> hey, yo. She needs a new brow tech, bro. <laughs> what are what is that? What is this? <laughs> Why, who put this skateboard on your head, yo? <laughs> who put that there? 
this video I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to make this video long. Black women, we 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 gotta stop doing stuff like this, man. F first of all, makeup is witchcraft. You can't convince me otherwise. Makeup is the devil. It is not good. Y'all gotta get rid of all of it. Yo, just throw it. Any any woman watching this video, you got if you got makeup right now, take it, put it in a box, go outside, go to the fire pit, and then light that crap on fire. No man likes it. We don't like it. Especially. Espe especially when it look when your eyebrows look this crazy. I know I let be looking at some of these women with, with bad makeup and she'd be like, girl, <laughs> girl, girl, if you need, if you need, if you need an eyebrow deck, you could have just DM me, girl. <laughs> these are possibly the worst eyebrows I've seen mm, since. My birthday. My birthday was in July. I think these are the worst eyebrows. They're not even even. Look at it. This one's higher. Jesus Christ. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm spending so long on this. This is catastrophic. Here's what's worse. And this is why I really want black women to stop doing stuff like this. Look at she she ain't even got no shirt on. She just all titties. This this, this ain't nothing but titties and brows. This, that's that's what this girl is. Tit, tits and brows and mouth. Tits, brows, and mouth. These women have dealt with a lot of negativity just by being on this show. I know they have. I know they have. But can I keep it a buck though? Can I can I keep it a buck? Can I just can I just keep it a buck on my channel? This girl look like a hoe. She look like a street walker, bro. She look like a prostitute. That's what that's what she looks like right now. We just started this video and and we ain't man, we nothing good has happened. We starting off trash. We starting off like prostitutes. That's what we starting off like. Well, black women, y'all gotta stop doing this, man. Y'all gotta stop doing this. All right. Let me stop being all right, I'm I'm done being mean. Let, let's continue, man. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Oh so yeah. Okay, what about Carrington? Ugh. Um, my experience was great. Arizona was beautiful. Um, I love the travel. So just the overall going out there was amazing. I was really nervous beforehand, but the girls definitely made it better for me. We talked, everybody reassured me, uh, anxiety was through the roof, but it ended up being so easy, so smooth. And uh, like Renee was saying, afterwards we were talking and we're like, dang, we kind of had a boring episode. Like nobody even said anything crazy. <laughs> nobody, like everybody, guys and girls in the group chat, all were kind of in the agreement that uh, we didn't have a lot of viral moments. We were wrong, clearly. But um, during the experience, everybody was like, oh, like everybody was so nice. Like everybody tried really hard to be uh, respectful, give compliments. Um, it was definitely a learning experience as far as production and how things like this go on. Um, a lot of standing, a lot of standing. Um, but it was great, like being out there, it, it was amazing. And like Kamina said, we we all kind of had a bond. We went and did things afterwards as groups um, multiple times. We had that group chat. We're really kind of bonding in a way, getting to know each other offset. Uh, um, outside off of camera of course now we all have different perspectives of everybody and the experience is a little tweaked but initially it was like oh like we might have not have found our person but we definitely found friends out of it um initially but you know mm -hmm. you, you live and learn and then as far as the comments and things like that I'm a very inside person I am not like I, I took a detox from the internet and social media before this trip and getting it back and this being the first thing, it was a lot for me. So I can't sit here and act like, oh, I have the toughest skin. Um, I just stopped reading the comments because I know everybody's pure intent. And after getting to know these women, I, I just can't. Like I couldn't sit there and watch them degrade these women as far as their looks, their personalities, because those conversations afterwards show that those 20 seconds that one person out can because I know everybody's pure intent and after getting to know these women I, I just can't wake up like I couldn't sit those 
Um, mm. So it did. It kind of hurt my feelings. It kind of put me in a weird space. Like, oh, okay, I don't. For one, I don't date. I don't communicate with people just outside of work and things like that. So this right here was extremely overwhelming, having all those eyes on, on me uh, from people that I don't even know. But overall, it was it was nice. Okay. All right. Let's go and let's move into ish. Um. So the experience overall, I think, had. Um, a lot of positives to it. The, like Carrington said, going through the process, understanding how things like that work, um, meeting new people. The group of ladies that I met was amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. I I don't have, I have zero bad things to say about um, any of the women. That was an amazing experience for me. Afterwards, um, you know, getting to know the guys, you know, you get to know people at a certain level and you see things and you're like, you know, these guys, aren't so bad not saying that they were bad when we seen them but you kind of see people for what they are outside of them being on camera so um felt like i got a really good look at who these people were and then after the video dropped you know seeing all the negativity and everything wait a minute did she just put on did she just leave and put on uh, outside of them being on camera so oh okay never mind i thought she left and put on lipstick and put on like eyelashes <laughs> i'm like did this bro okay no she didn't do that all right my bad my bad my bad let's continue let's continue so then after the video dropped you know seeing all the negativity and everything that people were shooting at the girls i feel like i got a lot of heat i'm not saying that you know everybody got positive stuff then i got like negative negativity but when i tell you I was waking up in a bad mood because so many people were saying all these negative things about me that weren't true. Like there were rumors like all over people making like individual videos of me. And I've never been under scrutiny like that, especially in such a negative way. And me being the person that I am at the core, you know, it really did hurt my feelings. Cause I'm like, these people literally don't know who I am. They just see these images um, of something put in front of all these people and we're expected to do this thing like the 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 show is about dating and essentially either accepting or rejecting a person and i feel like when we're being honest with ourselves and we're you know rejecting people in front of all of these eyes is seen as such a negative as if we are meant to be with every person that crosses our path and that's just not realistic um so i think it was a good experience overall being able to you know meet these people and have this connection but i don't necessarily like how much negativity um the women receive because again like carrington said knowing these women they are such good women inside and out and i just can't see what people are seeing online and i've gotten to know them at the level that i have so um a lot of positives but i definitely don't care for the negatives that came with it i feel like you know, if people were a lot more open, open-minded and understanding, they would feel, you know, that we're human too. You can't learn or know somebody off of 20 seconds, especially with all these negative headlines that each episode or each video of, you know, ha that has been taken out of context has, has been given. Like, it's just so many he say, she say things that are like, kind of like the telephone you hear one thing on the first episode then the next like the, the next clip somebody says something different and takes it out of context and somebody takes that clip and now that clip is taken out of context it's just so much you know bending and twisting and not even knowing the full truth so i definitely want people to understand like all y'all seen on the internet not true so not it's true. i just want all right I'm gonna say this, man. Some of these women, not just the, not just them, the other women who have been on the show before, they came on to the show to m meet each other, to meet new girlfriends. Oh, you know, if I don't meet a match, at least I'm gonna have some 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 new girlfriends that I can talk to, and whenever I travel, I, well, I can kick it with them. It, it's I don't. They're not. You're not taking the show seriously at that point, and um, it's. It's like, for example, if you have something that you want to do in your life and you have a backup plan and you have a backup plan, and a backup plan, it's like you spend more time. You put more effort into the backup plan than you do plan A. Plan A is I want to do this. So when you come onto the show, think I want to do this, like put your effort into. OK, I want to do this and ignore the whole I'm going to meet new girlfriends. Forget the girls.
Let's continue with this. I want to ask you a question, right? Because you said that you had you don't do bold guys, but Mo <laughs> um, was basically, you know, Who? bold. So obviously, people are saying, you know, you say you have to be honest, right? But was you being honest at that time when you was when you say you don't do bold and then but you was gonna go for Mo? Um, I think I was being honest, but with Mo. You may not have seen it on camera, but like he literally had hair. Like it was not like completely, completely bald. Like he was like missing all his hair. It was mm -hmm. legitimately hair growing out of his head. He just had a really low cut. And even if you go on his Instagram page, which I seen afterwards, you can see like videos and pictures of him with actual hair. Like he's not like completely bald. So that's what I was seeing. And I'm not saying that. Why is she I'm laughing? against bald men because that's another thing that was taken out of context. I think black men especially are really, you know, handsome, especially being bald. I think for me it's just an age thing. And the difference between uh, Rob and Ma was that Rob, like he said, he couldn't help it. Like he didn't have the capability to, to grow hair, you know, in certain parts of his head. So he was bald. But Ma was a little different. Maybe he was bald or low cut by choice. Um... And I think but, that's but what do the you, do you, do you, But do you get what people see, though? Because obviously a lot of people see that he is basically, you know, nearly bold, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're coming on this type of show and you're, you're, you're presenting yourself the way that you present yourself, people will judge you by what they see, right? So did you think that the way that you acted like and some of the stuff that you said also um you said the the thing about the the long distance thing right you said that, mm -hmm. that was an issue um obviously coming onto the show i mean i would imagine you're coming on if you're flying into phoenix i would think that you're okay with long distance you know other people um, Cause I, yeah because uh, the majority of people that come on the show they're flying from different parts of the states mm -hmm. you know so right what so, are the chances that you're going to find somebody that isn't that's that lives in the same state as you I mean, I think the chances of that are very high because you're crossing these people's paths every day. Um, the issue with the law and distance, especially the situation with what? Cliff, is that he's living in Las Vegas, right? I'm living in, you know, the Detroit area of Michigan. That's right here and right here. Um, long distance is different in Michigan and Ohio than it is from Michigan and Las Vegas. So the proximity was not there for me. Um, if I can drive four hours to see a person, you know, if we're doing it every other week, you know, you know, two times a month or however it is, the proximity is there and there's some closeness. And I think in any uh, long distance relationship, the parties have to be eventually oh, willing shit. to move, but too far of a. I have to take this call, yo. <laughs> All right, we back. My apologies, y'all. Let's let's lock back in is the proximity is there and there's some closeness and i think in any uh long distance relationship the parties have to be eventually willing to mm. move but too far of a distance just would not have worked for me um and i think that's very reasonable um and there I, underst people... I understand i understand that but for the show right the show is a long distance type of show like you yeah know, but... like your fav if you're coming on the show you kind of have to be you know okay with long distance because everybody else is flying in yeah, you know, I, well, love. I don't think she's saying she's not okay with it. She's yeah. okay with it to a certain no. extent. Right. To a right. certain extent. But, and then, but, this and then is, but this is the you thing you know hear, that look, you, you have to hear you, me out from my standpoint. You have two people from Philadelphia. Right? Shut up. You have. Let BM talk. Stop cutting him off. It was just flying in. Yeah, you know, I, I, think, I don't think she's saying she's not okay with it. She's yeah. okay with it to a certain no. extent. Right. To a right. certain but, extent. And then, but this is but this is the thing you know that you. You have to you, hear me out from my standpoint. You have two people from Philadelphia, right? You have Maul and you had, I don't know her name, but they were from the same state. So that's like a luck thing. I think when you go on these shows, you have to understand that it's some sort of luck or some sort of, you know, destiny. If you're not meant to meet somebody on these shows, you're just not meant to meet that person. But they happen to come on the show and be from the same state. So maybe they were meant to meet. Um, from my standpoint, I know what I was willing to do and what I was willing or what I wasn't willing to do. And I knew like the proximity that I was kind of willing to work with. And that's just what it was. Like there's eight people, there was 10 of us. It's not always going to be, you know, a perfect match or everything's going to be, you know, cookie cutter or perfectly fit in shape. And I think that's what the experience is about. But to say that, um, 
I wasn't accepting of any type of distance. I think it's kind of just shooting out into the dark because two people were from Philly. There could have been somebody from Ohio. There could have been somebody that lived in Indiana, but it just wasn't like that on the episode. And I don't think that's necessarily on me personally. Um, if we're talking about getting realistic matches, like realistically you guys pick the people so maybe try doing things on a regional level to where people are more comfortable because i know a lot of ladies not just myself that wouldn't necessarily do long distance if it was just too long like too much of of, of a distance in between the people so yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah no and don't tell this man how to run his show you come on the show and you abide by the rules what don't tell this man how to run his show, you crazy? I, I I understand what you're saying there. But essentially, this show, we do put on the description that it is for the whole of the USA. So you have to know that if you're coming <laughs> on the show, know that you should be open-minded to dating people from all over the oh, states. Man. And I understand you, what? you know, not wanting to be... Some people come on and they, they are from the same state. But, you know, we are picking people who we think is compatible with other people. We're not looking at distance. Me and my wife... I mean, I lived in London for 20 years and then I came to the US. So if you're talking long distance, <laughs> that, that didn't stop us. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but um, I, I definitely understand what you're saying there. And um, yeah, let's move on to Kia. I think we can all see the problem. This girl's just hard headed. She's hard headed. And she just tried to tell this man how to run his. Sh this is his show. You applied. This is their show. This ain't yours. Don't come in here and try to tell nobody how to do nothing. You just abide by the rules. Get out of here. What? That is arrogant. Oh, no, I don't like that. I do not like that at all. And if you want a show to be run regionally, there already is one. It's called reality. <laughs> it's called check your DMs. It's called <laughs> it's pop the balloon or check your DMs. Pop the balloon or go outside pop the balloon or go to go to church all right pop the balloon or let the guy at the grocery store have your number all right that's that that's what you do don't come on this show if you want someone want someone locally you live with the people who are local just let them let them get your number and talk to them it's really simple that was insane. You're insane. You're insane. Man, she did all that talking. Long-winded is Jax. All that talking just to sound worse. Yeah, I'll say um, I don't want to speak for everyone. I don't like this girl. I don't like her. From the show, she was being fake. She would pop her balloon. Oh, I want to speak life into you, though. I want you. I don't like her. She's fake. I don't like this girl. Move on to Kia. Yeah, I'll say, um, mm -hmm. I don't want to speak for everyone, but at least for me, I was not ready for these quote unquote 15 seconds of fame. Um, when I uh, just chose to be on the show, I, it never crossed my mind, oh my gosh, I'm going to get hundreds of notifications a day or, you know, whatever feedback I received. My, my notifications have been on mute for years, so that wasn't a huge problem. I did uh, look at some of the comments the first day the episode dropped, and I said, hmm, that's interesting. But I'm the type of person who has no issue with distinguishing the internet from real life. So it, that's not something that, um, you know, I will say that I, there were way more positive comments that I received than negative. Um, of course, we all receive negative comments. Um, I will say uh, I've, I've gone on a few times and people have actually noticed me. Oh, I really enjoyed, you know, your episode, your positive demeanor, blah, blah, blah. And that was really encouraging to me. Because one thing about me, as you can see on the episode, I try to exude positivity and encouragement for other people, whether or not I know you or not. And so it was really a blessing to me to receive that back in return. Now, for the negative comments, um, one thing that was really eye-opening for me was that people seem to know me better than I know myself. People seem to know my intentions better than I do and better than even God knows me. So I'm so glad that you all are so much more intelligent. Um, and I'll also <laughs> say that this episode really highlighted to me um, how 
big mental illness is and how vastly undiagnosed it is. Because for you, BM, I can't imagine you as the person you are today going, looking up on anyone's platform just to go on their page, type their name in, go on their page, go under their pictures and express how much they genuinely have believed in their mind that they hate someone that they have never met. So um, it was also interesting. There was actually one comment in particular that I came across. Um, a guy who's been talking to himself in my DMs since 2021 <laughs> decided to go under <laughs> all of the positive comments and basically say that he knows me. And then I've gone on this so many, basically a tour of all of these dating shows. And, you know, it is widely known that I hate black men. And I go on all of these dating shows just to have a viral moment to be disrespectful. We've never met a day in my in, in my life. You know, I did uh, submit my DNA to Ancestry, so maybe, you know, I'm cloned somewhere. Um, but it's interesting that people can make these uh, She's connotations funny. about you, uh, create the this image of you just to demean you. And I, you know, all I can say is I'll pray for you guys. It's unfortunate. You know, you, BM, are always thinking about the next big move, your next next project, how to make money, how to better yourself and your family. And that's the that's the wavelength that I am on as well. So it's difficult for me to understand the process, the thought process of someone who thinks any differently and actually has the time to go on someone else's platform to belittle them. So that's unfortunate. And you're in my prayers. She's very long with it, too, but she's absolutely right. Even though I don't like her, she's 100 percent right. Uh, everybody that watches this video. Some of y'all got to chill, man. Y'all like I'll be seeing it, too. Go on a social media page. Like you, you see the post and then I'll see the person tagged like it'll be a clue about her or anybody. It could be her, anybody. It could be Arlette or any one of the guests on the show. I'll see someone tag and then I'll go to their page and then people will just be leaving nasty comments under their posts. Y'all got to stop doing that kind of stuff. That's, that's actually very, very trash. Uh, unfortunately that's how social media is. Um, we just gotta, we have to do better at ignoring the fluff. You know, some people are not as good at ignoring a lot of the fluff. All right. So, uh, this is to the viewers. Y'all y'all got to stop doing that kind of stuff. That, that's trash. That's that's super trash to go under somebody whether you like them or whether you love them. It doesn't matter. Don't don't be going up under people's pages and you don't know this person and just saying crazy stuff, man. Uh, we got to stop doing that. Hey, play. So I should do want to add to that as well. So, um we are actually normal people. You know, me, I never ever think that I am this big person better than people. No, I am the same as everybody. Once once we leave this earth, we're all gonna be well the same. Agreed. You understand? So one thing that I always have to um let people know that I'm a musician. I've had all of this that what everyone's getting. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I've been through it all. The internet, the trolls, the the hate. And you know what I say to haters? I don't watch you. So why do you watch me? Right. That's my point, don't, essentially. Right. Don't watch me. So there you go. If you put too much energy into people that are negative, gonna drain you. You're gonna mm -hmm. get you're, you're gonna get drained, and you're exactly. just gonna be stuck on their level. They want you to be on that level, but if you don't watch them, and you keep going. Like if I was to follow haters, I would have failed. Exactly. So yeah, let's move on to let's move on to Christina. Okay, so yeah, wait, who just people. left? My point, don't, essentially. Right. Oh, don't watch me. So but if you don't watch them you okay. keep going like if i was to follow you let's move on to christina okay so i really loved my experience i didn't feel like i was disrespectful to anyone um i really didn't read the comments because i'm the type of person who doesn't care um but she cares <clears throat> watch her face really didn't read the comments because i'm the type of person who doesn't care you saw that little that 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 I that thing she did with her eyes that was care that's what that was she cares respectful to anyone um I really didn't read the comments because I'm the type of person who doesn't care um that right there that was care but okay <laughs> um yeah that's I really didn't care but most of all it was a positive experience for me it was something I did for the first time and I enjoyed everyone and yeah it was great 
thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So what would you guys say, um, like, what do you think it was that caused people to be so negatively impacted by your episode? They don't see it yet. They don't um, see it. Me personally. I oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. what, caused, what caused people to hate this group so much? They were just wasting everybody's time. They weren't taking any of the men seriously. And they were judging the men off of, like, very superficial things that r rarely ever even exist. Like... The, the the men that they were they were asking for about like six foot whatever men like that mostly don't even ex they're not even here god didn't create them they don't exist <laughs> they don't exist and they were being un unrealistic and they were being kind of entitled and they just felt like they deserved better than the men that they provided all right and they don't be bringing no slouch guy. They don't be bringing no bums up here. They don't be bringing no bammers up here. You know what I mean? They they be bringing like some good guys who have a good head on their shoulders. They're about something. They have ambition. Like you know, these are men who are driven. A lot of these men are in shape. A lot of these men are already making money. I don't hardly any of them have nine to fives. A lot of these men. I mean, some of them do, but a lot of these men like they have businesses. They're entrepreneurs. They're working and they make their own schedules. They're their own managers. Right. A lot of these men are able to travel a lot. These are these are some these are some quality guys that they're bringing on. And granted, these are quality women that they're bringing on. Definitely quality. The problem is they're not they're not that you're being entitled and you're you're believing that you are owed more than what God has already created for you. So people are looking at you like, oh, stop being so stuck up. That was a good man. And when y'all keep saying no and keep popping your balloon, now people hate you because now you just feel like y'all just wasting BM's time. You're wasting our last time and you're wasting our time. That's why when I did the review on their episode, I didn't even finish watching the video. I went to the gym. It was a waste of time. I'm like, y'all can waste y'all time. I'm not wasting mine. I'm going to work out. I need to hurry up so I can go to the gym today. Gym closed at nine o'clock. It's, well, it's, it's five o'clock. I got time. Yeah. So that's why people hate y'all, because y'all were being uppity, y'all were being stuck up, and y'all were y'all were turning down these good black men, and they were bringing on to the show, so people don't like y'all. Let's see what they say. Do you want to go yeah, ahead? go ahead, Carrington. Okay. Me, personally, I feel like it's because um, they don't realize that this is a production at the end of the day. Even though it's all authentic, and everything that is said is being said there is a purpose of this show we you want to hear what, why you want to hear that initial thought you want to hear exact things like you know for, at first we were being extremely what you would be in the real world you know you're at a bar a guy approaches you you don't say oh no i don't you're ugly you're ugly you don't say that you just be like you know no thank you <laughs> yeah i'm not interested you know but on a platform like this when we're expected to why why aren't you attracted to them? Why was it the initial attraction? What did you see? What about his shoes? You have to be specific. And there are only so many ways you could deliver that. If I said I was mm -hmm. unattracted, I wasn't attracted to you, clearly I'm just not attracted to you. That doesn't mean that you're not handsome. And we got a lot of comments about that as well. People are like, how does every man, how is every man handsome after you done turned him down? I've met handsome men every day of my life. I've worked with handsome men all day long. That does not mean I'm attracted to any of them. You can be attractive, but not be attracted. Um, and I think there was a really weird turn and everybody forgot, like, this is a dating show, guys. Mm -hmm. This is a, like, it, you're not my person. Um, so everybody was just super upset about the fact that this is not, you. you, you might give every man in your DMs a chance. You might. You might hear every man that approaches you out, maybe, but the women lineup that was up there, they're all extremely beautiful women. I promise you that they get attention every day, every day. At least, you know, I can't speak for them, but I see them in person. I, I see myself every day. I, just because you, you seem sweet doesn't mean that I have to entertain that, you know, um, making yourself less available in certain ways does higher your value. Having standards does higher your value as a woman in my opinion so if i see this man come out and i'm not attracted to him you guys are like hear him out hear him out why why i'm not attracted i'm gonna hear you out because somebody else might want to hear you out but i don't i'm not into you 
I have to wake up to you every day. If, if we match, you know, and, and it goes farther, I have to wake yeah. up to you. I have to be proud that you're my man. I have to be able to say, that, yeah, I chose that and not yeah. have any sex. I went on there really to date as well as multiple, uh, most of these women, in my opinion. Why now on this platform am I supposed to give somebody a chance who I'm not attracted to? And I done flew across the country not to settle. I, I didn't do that. And they are handsome men, you know, somebody is going to really want to be with that man and drool over him and their body's going to get tingly. That wasn't the case for majority of us women. And that's not fair for you all to, or for them to expect us to hear him out. He's a nice guy. Hear him out. He's got money. Hear him out. He's tall. That's fine. <laughs> that is fine. But I'm not attracted. And um, so, a lot of those comments were telling us that we were just young minded and we just uh, our priorities are messed up. And, and I have to disagree. I have to so, disagree with a lot of that. Her initial statement was wrong. It was incorrect. She said the show is about telling why and like what's your response to why you're not attracted to it. Well, now, now all of that that she said in initially the first thing she's no that that was wrong. The show is about finding love. <laughs> That's what the show is about. It's about finding love. It's not about turning people down and telling you and telling people why I'm not attracted to it. That's not what the show is about. That's not the premise. Um, that is a part of the entertainment, but that's not the premise. That's the entertainment part. So wrong on that. Um, also, when women start, when women have dated like a, a number of guys and women have had sex with all these different types of guys throughout their life women start to feel as though oh this man and i'm not going to say that this is specifically her but this is what she sounds like she sounds like what we've heard over and over and over and over again i'm not going to settle how we hear this like every every day you go on social media whoops and you see a black woman talking you hear black women talking about how they don't want to settle. And I hate to say black women, but it is what it is. It's black women who are saying it. Black women are saying, I don't want to settle. So this is what this sounds like. Um, and, and, you know, <laughs> I've seen this. I've seen this firsthand. I've seen this happen firsthand. So it's not like I don't. It's not like I'm pulling this out of my behind because I've seen this happen. Um, but women get ran through. Women are women are women looks like you have a woman who looks so good, right? She's so attractive and all, and, and she thinks that, okay, because I'm so attractive that I can have whatever guy I want. Any, just about any woman can have whatever guy she wants to smash her. Just about any woman can get that. I can have whatever guy I want. Yeah. But, but you still have to work on your characteristics and she doesn't seem like a very peaceful person. She doesn't seem like she's very peaceful. She seems like she's very argumentative, very talkative. And no, 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 like just she seems like she'll talk your head off a little bit, a little, maybe, maybe. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But that's what it seems like to me. And you know, when when women get ran through, they start to think these men that have run through me, these are the type of men that I deserve. No, you don't deserve those guys. You don't deserve those guys that ran through you. They're all better than you. They're all they like they deserve someone actually better than you that's what happens a lot of the times um and you know i don't know this girl personally i don't know if she's ran through i don't know i don't know her i've never met her i don't know i can't you know i don't want to be mean to these people but i'm just saying what is this is what it sounds like it we've heard this over and over and over again we've heard this numerous times so let's continue so so i i i I have to say as well that um, people think that, oh, when, when we're getting this type of traction or oh, we're here, like, oh, yeah, we're getting traction. No, we want people to actually match. match. Yeah, find love. Me, yeah, I yeah. want people to actually find their love. You right. know, that's the main thing. we actually get, like, frustrated when there are matches because we're like, dang, we picked these people's this, And y'all were. This, this, this is the thing, right? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I, I even caught issues well because um, when I saw the, her stuff going around. And, you know, I had said, look, I know there's there's a difference with being rude and being honest, right? Right. I know a lot of you was was just being honest. Honest, right? Mm -hmm. I even warned you girls on the show. Remember, I stopped recording mm. and I said to you girls, "You're all saying the same things." Piggybacking. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think the main thing is that 
people just kept hearing the same thing and it and it's kind of like you know are they all just copying copy and paste like are they all just copying mm-hmm. each other so do you think that maybe that's what people that got? could have been something women definitely do that still a hang up because when we were saying oh initial attraction which is very much the truth you know production you know behind the scenes it's like hey guys like you all are saying initial attra- be specific and then that's when the girls started to be more specific they realized like maybe we are being a little cushiony maybe you are being a little nice and then it got turned into hate so so um when we actually said to you i said to you ladies you're saying the same thing i said the same exact answers is what when the internet see this they're, they're gonna, gonna have something to say mm-hmm I said, when the internet see you keep saying the same answers, they're going to have something to say. And some of you girls as well, when I said that, you didn't believe it, you know? I and I was, actually. And I was like, ladies, I want you guys to uh, do well. I want you to do well. But um, so we didn't say for you to, you know, go super dive deep and stuff. We were saying basically just, you know, if you're saying the same thing, it's, it's, Change it's, it's up like a bit. copy and paste. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, Ish, Ish wanted to speak. I do. Um, I want to kind of piggyback off of Carrington. Um, I think it sounded like we were saying the same things essentially because we were feeling the same things about these men. Just like Carrington said, you can be nice. You can have a good career, um, which is funny because a lot of people call us gold diggers and all of those men have all of those men have very good careers, money. It was never about that. I think we're all women that are um, successful in our own ways. So um, people hate to see it, but we have options. So those types of things just right off bat doesn't necessarily make us drool and want to pick these guys because they have a good career or they come off nice because, you know, if you're a religious person or you believe in a higher power, like, you know how to, you know, trusting yourself, trusting who you believe in, and that allows you some level of discernment. So every person that you encounter, just because they're nice, you can be a nice guy, but you don't have to necessarily be a good guy for me. If I, you know, talk to every nice uh. guy, then I would be looked at and shamed as a, a you know what in the streets. You know what I'm saying? So I think we're all just talking. Women and we're she successful in a way to where we don't necessarily have to, you know, give attention to all those things that everybody's, you know, trying to sell on the internet. And then the thing is, too, yes, it's a dating show, but let's be honest and and not act like people don't show you representation of themselves when they show up to you for the first time. Shoot, for the first couple of months, like they're giving like the best version of themselves because they're in front of you. And they're in front of the production team. They're in front of all these women. And they know they're going to be in front of millions of eyes. So let's be clear about that. And then just like um, Carrington said, I did not fly across the country to settle. I'm trying to be married. I'm trying to date my husband. I'm not trying to date casually and have fun and kiki and talk with somebody. I want children like, you know, I want my life to go in a certain direction. And I simply did not see any of those men being the father of my children. And I, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't feel bad about that. And then I think the reason why women got so the women on the show episode got so much scrutiny is because a lot of those men, again, they didn't argue back or they didn't fight back or they didn't, you know, snap back like men on previous episodes did. And I think the internet has a tendency to try to take up for people that they think need taken up for. And in all reality, I'll just say it right now. None of those men needed any taken up for. They are very capable of taking up for themselves, very capable of taking up for themselves. And they didn't necessarily need that. They went on the show, you know, they had what they wanted to do on their mind. And in my opinion, they did exactly what they needed to do because the internet loved them. Right. But as far as the negative scrutiny we received, I feel like we received so much of it because there was no viral moment where the guy was snapping back and saying his piece to simple honesty from the women's part. Um, And I understand you say that we needed to 
be specific, but we didn't necessarily have to be mean. I still personally don't think that I was mean. I didn't, I never called anyone ugly. Um, I know a lot of comments said that um, I was a height shamer and how is six feet not tall enough. It was never that with me. Like my first boyfriend that I was with for like the longest, he was five, seven, I'm five, six and a half. I've never had an issue with height. My issue is that just like a lot of the women agreed, some of those men were being deceitful about what height they were, and that's just what it was. Like, so can I, can I, can I should just jump in there, right? Yep, go ahead. What? So this is for all the ladies. What is it about height? <laughs> I what don't care is about it height. about height that <clears throat> is so important, especially when you're way shorter? And this we can. Where's Haitian though? Right there, Camina. Right there, yeah, Camina <laughs> and um, Renee. And Renee. Let's ask both of them because you both had you know issues with height what is it that gets you so you know that you don't want to pick a guy because of their height when like i want her to talk more she's been making a lot of faces i've been like glancing over her this whole time she keeps she has a she has a lot of facial expressions and i want her to talk because she's talking a lot but she ain't speaking and i want to hear some stuff that she's been uh, you you were uh, Camino was Camino. five. She's five one. Five right? one, I think. That's five one. Said, yeah. And that guy was six feet. Oh six yeah, feet. that was her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, for she's one, crazy. he didn't really seem six feet, but he wasn't. Kind of like what we're saying. Um, we're on a show. There's production. Eight women with balloons. Me personally, I dated somebody. You know, five six, five ten. But if I'm going to be in front of the camera and like. I don't even know the name, the age, what you do for work, what you like, what you don't like. That's very small information, so I'm going to go what I prefer. It's not mandatory. Like in my real life, I don't use that mindset, but on a show like that, yeah. It's so like, how, okay, tall, how tall does, that, does your man need to be for you to accept them? I mean, he could be around like, I'll say five, six and up. I don't mind that. Lie. You just also have to be attracted to them as well. Exactly. You're not going to settle exactly. for Lie. height and attraction. Exactly, but she, height but and she, attraction. She, but she, yeah, but she didn't say the attraction on the show. She said the height. Exactly. Well, yeah, but yeah, like I said, if I'm exactly. on a show and I just get to know very small information about you, in my real world, it's not mandatory, but if I'm going on Pop the Balloon, it is, uh, I mean, it's not, it's, I'm, I'm sorry. So on the show, it's mandatory, but in my real life, it's just a preferred thing. So, like, I don't really know much about the guy, so I would prefer him to be, you know, tall. I mean, like I said, he didn't look six feet. He looked a bit shorter than that. But then again, you know, that's just how I felt at the moment. Okay. I'm going to say this. Women have a bad judge of... <laughs> women aren't very good at, like, judging uh, distance and, like, direction and stuff like that. Uh, I don't... It, that's have y'all like that's the reason why a lot of times men are like better drivers than women and i'm not trying to i'm not trying to be sexist i'm just telling you this is the truth this is this is something that's like literally this is like a a, a thing that's been researched men are better at judging distance and judging directions so and that's why a lot of times men drive the car and women are like the passenger princess right Women love being a passenger princess and just letting the man go where he needs to go, right? Um, so when women say, oh, I, I want a man who's this tall, whatever, blah, blah, blah. In all honesty, s sometimes women actually don't even know how tall that is. If, if we just go, if we just being real, women, women, sometimes they actually a lot of times don't even know how tall six feet is. They don't, they, if they, if it walked right past them, they would not recognize it. They would Look at him, be like, oh, you know, oh yeah, he's 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 oh he's six foot, really? Oh, he seems like he's shorted it because women just are not a good judge of distance and they're not a good judge of direction. Like men are better at that. If if a man, if, like, so for example, like fellas, have you ever just walked past a dude or have you ever been introduced to a guy? He was a stranger. Your homie introduced you to him. You're like, yo, what's good, bro? You know, nice to meet you. Blah blah. blah. Like. He didn't do nothing to you. You didn't do nothing to him. It's just an instinctual thing that sometimes us men do. We look at a guy and we like, we size him up and we just innately think to ourselves, 
could we beat this dude in a fight? Or like if 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 we had to protect our homie, if we had to protect like our girl or our family or something from this guy, could we kill this guy? <laughs> and and I'm not trying to be graphic, but like it's an innate thing that men do. We we size things up. We look at we look at situations and we judge distances. We judge uh, like the, how much land a place is, or like you know how big a place is, or how tall a guy is, how strong a guy is, how strong we are. Like this is just something that men just you know. And it's not and it's not. It's, I'm not doing saying that to make it sound like we're <laughs> we're um, like uh, barbaric or nothing like that. But there is a sense of barbaric like caveman and it, it, it never le- we're human beings it's like there's nothing we can do about that it's like an innate thing and women don't do that because women are not designed to be fighters and protectors and and hunters or anything like that that's so women just they're created differently than men are so i'm, I'm being super long with it i'm gonna have to edit this a lot but yeah, women. When women say, oh, "I want a guy who's six foot, whatever," a a, a a lot of times, sometimes women don't even know how tall that is. They'll be with a guy who's like five ten, and they'll think that he's six foot because they're attracted to him, or you know. So when you hear women say that, do not take her seriously. Do not take her seriously. This girl said something like that, and she's five one. But anyway, let's continue. Well, that's okay. just so, what that is. So what would you say is the difference from the show from your real life? Because it's still real life. Right. I feel like uh, my real life, let's say, example, a guy comes up to me, we're chatting it up. There's not cameras. There's not, you mm. know, I'm, you know, eight women are getting a chance to know this guy. And here I am. Okay. You know, it's not like it's kind of like one one on one more private. So if the guy, let's say, was like five, six it's a different situation because I'm actually talking to him. It's private. We're actually getting to know each other. And if I go off of that, he's cool. Cool. But if it's somebody just coming out and I'm this, my name is this 27. I do this. It's more easier to just pop on high because I don't know much about you. It's not really that private. Um, That's how I took it as. But yes, I do. Since since everybody wants to know or saying I like, I do date people definitely under um, six foot. And I've dated somebody that was like five, six before. So yeah. Okay. And I want to just chime in. I think there's such a big difference with the split second decision that we have to make on Pop the Balloon. Like it's not a realistic setting. Um, we're asked to make these decisions like almost in 30 seconds or less when like Kamina said, you're in a real setting talking to someone, you know, one on one, actually getting to know them. And nine times out of 10, if you're in a setting like that, you're only talking to that person because you're attracted to them. That's cap. That's cap. You're lying. That's not true. Nobody's asking you. You don't have to pop your balloon. You decided to pop it. Y'all were in line. It don't. It, Thirty seconds or less. No, these men are up there for like ten minutes a piece. Though the when they do these shows, these shows are like an hour long each, <laughs> and they have like eight contestants up there. You know what I mean. That's that's almost that's that's less than 10 minutes. That's like eight minutes a piece. That ain't no 30 seconds. It don't take a woman that long to be attracted to a guy. That's cap. That's cap. She's lying. That's a lie, bro. Anything you say after this, I can't even take you seriously because you started out capping 30 seconds. No. And even if it was 30 seconds, you can. Even, OK. OK. Let's say if the show was 15 minutes long and these men had 30 seconds each, <laughs> which that's a lie. I, I, why? I don't even have should do I even have to finish saying what I'm about to say? Because she's lying. If, let's say the show was 15 minutes long and every man had 30 seconds. All right. We got 15 minutes. Boom, 30 seconds. Each fella. If you pop your balloon, you pop it. But if you don't pop your balloon, you give yourself more than 30 seconds. You decide whether you want 30 seconds or you don't. It's still up to you, even if that were the case. But that's not the case. You're lying. You're capping. Cap. You know, in one way or another. So you you allow them certain things and you give them chances. But like off of initial, like somebody just walking out and then 
let's not act like there's not a mental thing to it to where like say the first guy comes out like if that person is not what you're thinking about that you want in your head you're thinking okay i have this chance and this chance and this chance after that to see if maybe someone matches me better like that you're telling on yourself again you're telling on yourself again i really want her to say something because she's making all them faces she's doing a lot over there I'm just, you know what? I'm going to just let her talk because I'm going to just keep stopping and she ain't saying nothing. That I okay. think I think that plays a role too. Mm -hmm. I think in this example, you know, BM, you mentioned she mentioned height as opposed to physical attraction. I just reiterating the conversation we had earlier, we did pause and you did let us know, hey, you're repeating the same things. Even I went and started saying other things. So Kamina is saying, instead of saying it's physical attraction, as you all instructed us to do, please give different answers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for uh, me, Renee, I, yeah, go ahead, Renee. Yes, I am a tall woman. Y'all saw that on the show. And I feel like every guy that I've dealt with, I have no problem finding guys that's like six four, six five, like taller men. And that's just what I prefer because I am a, I like a guy with stature, a guy that holds himself to, you know, like, but I like what I like. And no comment can make me change how I feel about the show you know what i'm saying stubborn like i said the guys were handsome they were nice but i didn't want to just pick them because they were nice or handsome i want them to be like she said my husband type of material like i want to have kids i'm dating to marry at this point so mm. i don't want to just settle for someone who i think is nice i'm nice too so i don't know mm -hmm. i just want someone who fits to me my person and i didn't find that which gonna stay single you're gonna stay single Six five. She said six five. Jesus Christ! You gonna stay single? It's okay. You ain't never gonna find. So for me, I, I, sorry. Can I? Oh, she, <laughs> she's the one. <laughs> she's the girl I said like Magic Johnson's son. That's her. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, Kia said something that I actually wanna correct. Right. <laughs> Kamina, when she said that height thing was with the first guy that came out, I said to you girls to you're saying the same thing after the third or fourth third guy. guy, right? So this is what I'm trying to say to people that come on the show. You have to be real within yourself and know that you can actually come on a platform on a show like this. Mm. Because it's a lot more than you just seeing on the screen thinking it's easy. I can just walk in and just do this exactly. and say that. So, you know, when you're coming there, know that be prepared that you will get asked questions. My wife will ask you why mm -hmm. you're popping. Be specific and all that type of stuff. And also know how to present yourself. Know, you know, if you want people to see you like this, make sure you present yourself the way that you want them to see so I think pe a lot of people are not really mentally prepared. They just come on the come show on, thinking yeah. that it's going to be very easy. Be and, right. <laughs> so I, I want to ask you ladies, yeah, what have you learned by coming on the show? There you go. What have you learned? Um, I personally learned, um, for one, the internet is a terrible place. We're going to cut it. The internet is crazy. That's for one. Uh, for two, I, I learned we already knew um, that. that everybody has ulterior motives. Don't get me wrong, in my 26 years of life, I've met all walks of life and I know that people aren't who they portray themselves as anyway. Um, but you know, mentally going onto the show, I was thinking, oh, if I am taking it serious enough to fly across the country and uh, put myself in a vulnerable place, because that's exactly what it is. Um, I thought that the opposite side, the men and the women that are alongside me were in that same mindset and honestly it just taught me to keep my guard up like i don't regret not matching i'm actually very thankful that god put me in a position to get out of that situation um because you know after the show we we definitely got really acquainted with all everybody a uh, majority of the men majority of the women and it, it it showed me that you know there's there's nothing different outside of your hometown you know there's nothing different outside of your city these men are the same uh, these women are, you know, your person is going to meet you and then you don't have to force it. And, um, yeah, that's kind of what it was given. It was given like, oh, okay, I'm putting myself on the line to essentially force it. Like, you know, hopefully I find this guy, this dream guy all the way in Arizona when it's like, no, you, you met those same men that you meet downtown. You meet, the, you met them same men that come and holler at you every day in that inbox on the internet of course it was portrayed in a way and and i love that they got the positive life that they got but i hate that it was at our expense um mm -hmm. and, and i had to realize that we can't defend ourselves against everybody it's not even worth it um there's not enough hours in the day to defend ourselves against everybody but at the same okay. time um 
I, I definitely learned that as a black woman, uh, which all of us are black women, that there's nobody here to defend us. Because even though we did befriend those men um, and we, we got really acquainted and personal with those men, they came back on this platform uh, and doubled down on that we weren't good women. Um, they doubled down on those comments that were being said, even though in the messages, it was completely different. You know, in that group chat, it was completely different. In our personal messages, it was completely different. And um, I, I definitely learned to stop putting your heart on your sleeve. Stop, you know, you can be a genuine person, but you can't look for that in everybody else. So it was definitely a learning experience with meeting new people. Because like I said before, I don't meet a lot of new people that I'm pursuing in any type of friendship relationship manner. And because I did at this point, it, it just was like, that, that was a learning experience. Like, oh my gosh, you, you're, you're a fool. That, that was ignorant. Okay. Here's what women will do. Women will do something wrong, inappropriate, or whatever the case may be. They will not take accountability. She's making another face. I want her to say, I want her to speak. They will do something crazy, not take accountability for what they just did. And then they will want us black men to defend the crazy stuff that they did. And then when we don't defend them and we say, no, like that wasn't it. Now we're the problem. They, they, now they're turning it. Oh, they, they came back on the show and doubled down and told us, and they didn't defend us. Why, why even, even other black women are not defending you. Black, don't don't try to put this don't try to put this on nobody else and and try to play the victim like women always do women do this all the time stop don't play the victim even other black women are telling y'all that y'all wasted everybody's time that's what y'all did y'all wasted everybody's time on that show everybody's time you wasted your own time y'all came up here and look crazy and people are telling y'all you look crazy well t and matter of fact if you want to talk about how black men won't defend y'all, how about how about your own sisters, your own black sisters won't defend you either? Like, call them bad. Call t talk bad about black other black women. Then don't don't talk bad about black men. Don't do that. Talk bad about your own black sisters too. Talk bad about them. And I'm being sarcastic. Don't talk bad about anybody because. Neither one of them are bad. The black men are not bad. The black women are not bad. And what I'm saying is they both were calling y'all out. Black men and black women were both. Go read the comments on Instagram. Go read the comments on YouTube. Everywhere. They n None of them liked y'all. So take some, like, you know what I'm saying? I, now, if you have your opinion, you have your opinion. But if... Thousands of other people have their opinion and they all are against what you, they're all saying you're wrong. Just maybe, just, just maybe, maybe, just maybe you should stop playing the victim. Maybe you should actually take some accountability now. Maybe it's time to take, maybe that's what you should have learned. I'm glad that she at least said uh, the men in my city are the same men. You know, I came here looking for a dream guy and I realized that that wasn't real. I'm glad that she at least said that. I'm glad she at least said that. But yeah, I mean, come on, ladies, take some accountability, man. This, right keyboard, there. this yeah. keyboard be tripping. Let's hear from uh, Christina. Um, so I learned that I should Time to probably talk. be more prepared for things like this. Um, I just regret like not thinking about my answers before I came and like not being as engaged because I was just trying to be like genuine, like 100% myself or whatever. But yeah, I definitely should have been more prepared and I feel like. Wow, that's crazy. She regrets being genuine. What? Hold on. Let me read. Hold on. Am I dreaming? Did she just say that? Um. So I learned that I should probably be more prepared for things like this. Um. I just regret like not thinking about my answers before I came, and like not being as engaged because I was just trying to be like genuine, like one hundred. Oh my gosh! She really just said that. She regrets being genuine. Oh my Jesus Christ! What? Is... How much longer is this? These these women. These women don't, they, oh my Jesus, oh my Jesus. Uh, 
This girl really just said that she regrets being genuine. Present myself or whatever. But yeah, I definitely should have been more prepared. And I feel like, once again, I was very respectful. I did learn that it's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. So, right. yeah, that's really it. Okay. And then, uh, so she ain't yeah. learned nothing. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'll say that I truly do believe that I was prepared for an experience like this. Um, God really um, has everything aligned for your best interest. And I'll say that, you know, there's always a blessing at the end of the road. So I am proud of going on the platform and being the genuine person that I am. I am proud go. of how I genuine. represented myself and how I respected everyone's son who came on the platform. I am proud of how I conducted myself thereafter. And so I'll say that God always has the final say and when at the end of the day. So overall, I'm blessed for the experience. Okay. And Renee? Yes. Um, I learned that no matter how you represent yourself, you're always going to be perceived as whatever another person. She too stubborn to learn anything. She ain't learned nothing. Wants to think. Um, for me, I felt like I was 100% myself. Um, I gave nice answers. I was nice. Um, I feel like I, I represented myself well and People still had negative things to say about me. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay. <laughs> and then Ishi. For me, um, I learned that For one, me. the internet is a very unreal place. Uh, we already knew I that. Feel for those celebrities and like different people that are on a way higher platform and at a way higher status um, than us and the attention we receive because they receive hate like a million times more than us. So I can only imagine how their mental health is hearing the things that people said about me, like absolute lies, like saying that I had three kids, three kids and three baby daddies. I don't have any kids, by the way, I don't have any baby. <laughs> Where, what was that? That was on YouTube. That people said that on Instagram, like people would tag yeah. me and stuff. And I got tagged in like literal videos that people made just of me and the quote unquote mean things. Again, to y'all who be watching these videos, y'all got to stop being trash too. Y'all, some of y'all trash too. Saying mean stuff to people on their page. Y'all don't know these people. Crazy. I said to these guys, and they were making up all types of lies about me that I had on a wig. Never wore a wig on the platform. My real hair has always been that. Um, so I wanted to address that as well because I did not have a wig on that platform. But I'm just going to say that, going on to say that these people will make up things about you and literally like, believe it in their own minds and it's actually sick uh so i'm praying for everybody that you know that wants to be an internet therapist with absolutely no experience and no degree um if y'all are that <laughs> interested in doing that by all means go sign up for some classes because y'all will be good at it if you were actually right um but yeah outside from that just like Harrington said, uh, you perceive people in a certain way, especially with how they present themselves on camera and getting to know the guys behind the scene, you know, thought I built really good friendships with them. But, you know, seeing the podcast and how it played out, uh, it was it was giving very much um, black women aren't protected. And I didn't necessarily oh, agree with that. I'm sure, you know, they lead overall good lives i just didn't like the way that they like carrington said doubled down on how we were you know these terrible black women and getting to know them and hearing the positive things that they were saying about us and then to go out on the internet and completely flip the script it was like absolutely mind-blowing it was like it was like blindly raging to, to to see that they did us like that just learning to take things you know with a grain of salt you think you know somebody um even though if you you know you've known them for a short period of time like they're only going to show a certain amount of themselves until you know for lack of better words shit really hits the fan and shit happened to hit the fan and we were you know like i said it wasn't a good experience for it so just that and maybe choosing different word choice when describing things I would say that, but other than that, it was a positive experience. And I think that, um, I presented myself in a good light. Everybody that knows me personally hit me up and said like, 
you know, you presented yourself well, you presented Detroit well, we love you, we're proud of you, and all these other things. Like, it, it takes a really brave person to be able to do something like that, and you did it, and you look good while doing it. So that made me... Bruh, she ain't talked this much on the show, bro. Golly. Man. How long was the men's catch-up? Episode 4, The Unmatched Men from Pop the Balloon. 38 minutes. This episode is 50 minutes because this girl won't stop talking. Jeez Louise, man. Man, she been yap, yap, yap. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. All right, let me stop being mean. Let me stop being mean. She's yapping, though. Feel Golly. People that actually love me and care for me gave me positive feedback. And that's okay. really all that matters at the end of the day. Okay. And right. uh, Camila? Um, what I learned is um, you could go out and be yourself as respectful as you want to be. People are always going to find something to say. Mm. And, you know, it's okay. Um, also, as well, too, I learned you can't trust everybody. I mean, I always thought that. And um, I'm very close off of making friends and all that. So even just, you know, bringing these girls as friends and the guys on the show as friends is a big thing for me because I'm a very private person person when it comes to just like having people involved in my personal life other than social media mm -hmm. um so uh yeah uh, i learned that you can't trust people people smile in your face and act like they're cool with you and um uh -oh. yeah so going to the podcast you guys did with the boys i was pretty shocked um because i we've been in this group chat i believe for two weeks maybe i don't know and i we were thinking everything's cool everything's okay and to just see the stuff they said about us that they knew completely was not true about us. They know us from a different level of just the show that we filmed. So, you know, I learned, you know, I'm going to just keep you know, keeping how it was. Don't be letting people in my circle like that besides the ladies that I did become friends with because they hasn't they haven't shown me sides that they switched up on me. And then bringing back the PTSD haircut part, honestly, I'm um, seeing everybody. Live. Yo, her eyebrows are insane. She like, she like Cyclops, like when, <laughs> for Cy yeah. If you if you look away and look at her in the in the peripheral vision, she looks like Cyclops a little bit. Like you don't see her eyes, you just see the 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 brows. Those brows are prominent. Golly, man, where in the world you get these from? Man, them joints look like seats. Those are some prominent brows, yo. Jeez, look at they straight as jacks. Uh, I think she did say she likes glitter. She got a little glitter on her, on her chest and on her titties a little bit. I think that was her that said she likes glitter. Yo, you just... Uh, yo, makeup, eyebrows, wigs, all that stuff is... On a, that stuff is ugly. All of it is unattractive. Why do women do this? Why? God made you already. Why are you still making yourself? Oh, man. Yo, she looks atrocious, bro. Talk about that on, the, on that podcast really did um, hurt me in a way because... They're not even even. Is that... Are they like that because her facial expression? No. That one's on that podcast really did um, hurt me in a way because they're not even I'm a woman. And if I'm saying a man, <laughs> his head, because if you guys know what PTSD is, you can get it from a taste, a color, you know, environment, doesn't matter what it is. PTSD comes from anything. And, um, you know, it's not, you know, anybody's place to know what happened. Just know that that haircut did resemble a, a man that I dealt with. And, you know, that's just what it was. So the fact that people took that and was laughing and joking, oh, I'm, I'm going to go to the park and get the PTSD haircut. First of all, I don't even know what this man did to me. <laughs> it, you know, and the fact that it was becoming a laughing stock did really <laughs> make me feel some type of way. And I also want to tell other women, too. It is funny. Don't ashamed what your PTSD makes you feel. It could be, I don't know, color. Don't be scared. Oh, I'm going to look stupid or people are going to laugh at me. If that's what your trauma is, that's what your trauma is going to be. And you know what it is? And I was more, you know, I, I healed from that moment in my life and I was brave enough to go on the show and say, hey, because I could have just made up anything. Oh, he's short or, oh, his, uh, he's too buff or whatever. But I healed from that moment. I'm able to say right then and there, this is what gives me trauma. And I do not want to wake up to a man every day to see that haircut. And it's just going to bring back memories of what happened to me. So 
that's where as well um i learned you can't really get too open sometimes you know and things could be taken and as a joke um and it's funny too because when, it's I, a when joke. I did speak to kendall i did tell kendall like yeah that was a joke that was trauma so to see him go on that podcast and <laughs> laugh and joke like it's just i don't know i just learned so much you can't trust you can't open up too much you can't people take things and third round so i just learned sometimes i gotta just gotta keep my mouth shut about certain touchy things and i can't just go and yeah you should keep your mouth shut <laughs> ptsd haircut is crazy <laughs> ptsd haircut oh my god bro <laughs> yep if i see if i see a woman with a uh If I see a woman with with one eyebrow up like this one, like, I'm gonna get PTSD. If I see a woman, her eyebrows is like a is like a uh, like a coffee table, two coffee table. I'm gonna get PTSD from that. <laughs> I'm gonna remember you. <laughs> oh, I'm being mean. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's that's insane. You sound insane. opened up i guess i'm but sorry yeah, you had that experience, yeah and Kamina. and to touch on that uh kamina um we didn't know the severity of that whole situation because i think even when you said on the show Stop. you kind of smiled a little bit so i think that's what Stop. caused yeah, so this, everyone to yeah, laugh this, this at is that. The thing, this is what i was talking about how you act on the show is how people are going to take it you know like <sighs> when you said that i think you, you, you it, it seemed like let me say this hair ptsd ptsd haircut right I don't have PTSD based off of what I know about PTSD and people that I know personally who were in the military or, you know, who have P who like really have severe, severe cases of PTSD. All right. Like military is no game, yo. You know, military is not a game and people who have served and people who have, People who have even did terms or people, you know, like tours, like people, there are people who have PTSD on a level that's like, okay, this is, you know, thank God I don't have that. Right. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that she doesn't have P PTSD from a haircut. She, you know, she could have a very mild form of it, but there's no way that her PTSD is more severe than someone like what my dad could have had or, or somebody like people that i just know personally who like they have like they they can't go they they don't go anywhere without a gun on them they don't sleep they don't they shower with their gun you know what i'm saying like ptsd is real and and if you're saying that you have ptsd now women go through their trauma women, women go through trauma right i'm not i'm not here to downplay anyone's trauma that's not here that's not what i'm here to do but i also don't want I really hope that she's not downplaying other people's trauma as well by saying I have PTSD if she really doesn't from a haircut. All right. When somebody has PTSD, if, if someone, if someone is triggered through like a sense of smell, that's very strong. That's a very strong trigger. If someone is triggered through something that they hear, that's a very strong trigger. All right. If if someone is triggered through something that they see, that's a strong trigger, but it's not it's not the strongest trigger because we see things all the time. Everything that we see, we don't smell. Everything that we see, we don't hear. Everything that we see, we don't feel. So, I, and you know, there's probably some people who really take this girl seriously, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I can take that seriously or not. Her, her making it seem as heavy as what it, what she's trying to make it seem. I don't know if I can take that. I don't know if I can believe her. You know, it's it's just highly, it's so unlikely that it's that severe. You know, but if it is, God bless her. More power to her. I ain't here to try to, you know. But, you know, I, I do want people to be honest and I want people to be truthful. And, you know, I just wonder, I, I, I wonder if she's being truthful. PTSD hair, PTSD from a haircut, yo. PTSD, PTSD, like PTSD is crazy. 
PTSD is crazy. If you think you have PTSD, then go serve a term in the military and and watch watch your best friend get shot to Pete. I'm not going. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say nothing crazy. But if you think you have PTSD, talk to someone who really has like severe PTSD, and then go back and be like, Do I really have like Do I even really have PTSD, or is this just a bad memory? You might just have a bad memory. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm not going. I don't know. I'm. I think I'm gonna stop talking about that because. I don't want to open up a can of worms, but I want to be real. I want to be real with folks, and I want people to be real with themselves as well. So I just had to say something. My keyboard been slacking. Because I think even when you said on the show, you kind of smiled a little bit. So I think that's what yeah, caused so everyone this, to yeah, laugh this, this at is that. The thing, this is what I was talking about. Mm. How you act on the mm. show is how people are going to take it. You know, like when you said that, I think you you. you it, it seemed like you said it like in a jokey way, but obviously it was serious, serious right? Yeah. I feel like so yeah, when you spoke, serious. when when you spoke to Kendall by himself, you let him know that it was a serious thing. But everyone else that saw it on the show, yeah. they didn't know that. Do you get? Do you? Yeah, do you, do you, and do you, I have a thing too. When something's hard for me to talk about, I either laugh a lot or I smile. There's certain ways where I hide, but you know, like you know, I can't explain it. Like I'm just kind of like that. If I'm nervous, I'll start laughing a lot too in the show. I'm just a natural mm. laughing person. But as well on the show, I was a little bit nervous. So I was more giggly than usual. But it's just stuff like that. She must not be nervous right now because she ain't laughed not one time. You know, um, but like I said, I was, you know, able to speak about it. Mm. And I know millions of people are going to see it. Um, and it's just kind of like, you know, I smiled. Not that it was a joke, but it's just a thing that I do. If like things, you know, but like are comfortable I'd, to talk about a little bit, but. You know, that, that's that's why it's so hard as well, you know, when you come in the show because the people that are watching they don't know this. They don't know you. They exactly. just know they're just knowing this right now as you're saying this. That's why I wanted you all of you girls to come and speak to explain yourselves as well because now when they're watching they might have a different perception mm -hmm. of, you know, how you acted. You know. Um so one one thing as well that I um I do wanna kinda end off on is that um it takes a lot for people to come on the show. Mm -hmm. You know, people that watch watch this at home, they just they're watching on YouTube. But for you, for all of you ladies coming on the show is a, is is a big thing. You know, that's and facts. I, I I thank you a lot for being you, for being you, and um, staying strong. Mm -hmm. You know, because most people can't do this. You know, I, mm -hmm. I want to ask you, ladies, would you ever do this again? Um, no, they just weren't the guys weren't serious enough, so no, I wouldn't. What? No, they just weren't. The guys weren't serious enough. So, so no, I wouldn't. Wow. What a statement. Anyone else could go next. <laughs> um, I would do it again. I would just come work prepared. That's all. Okay. Um, I wouldn't do it again because it um, goes back to people show you what they want you to see, but behind closed doors, it could be a whole different person. So I wouldn't. I feel the same way. I feel like the experience was fun and I was expecting to find a match and I didn't. Um, so no, I probably wouldn't do it again, but it was still a great experience for me. And I'm grateful that y'all brought me on. Um, knowing what I know now, probably wouldn't do it. Um just based off of how everything unfolded here in our case uh internet and on the personal level with the uh, the young men that we were you know on the show with i wouldn't do it again i'll currently say i'm unsure i will say that i would r much rather not have to and meet my person um, I am just ready to cook my man a Sunday dinner, Sunday football dinner, and uh, make sure that his beard is nice and oiled. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm just ready for my man. I don't care about all this, all this other stuff. Right, and that's, that's the spirit. <laughs> Ladies, I really hope you all find love one day. I really do hope you all find your person. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank and you. Thank you for having me. Bye, Bye y'all. Bye, y'all. Right. All right, thank you everyone for tuning in, and we'll catch you all next time. Um, what a group these girls they said a lot of nothing nothing she said a couple of things that was good um oh, what did she say um uh, yeah about people yeah this is what i was when i was telling 
y'all, the viewers, to stop being trash. Some of y'all are trash too. Some of y'all watching these these Pop the Balloon shows. Some of y'all are trash too now, cause y'all be going in these people's comments and talking crazy. Y'all gotta stop doing that to people. That's that's insane. That's that's kind of trifling for real. Um, who else says something good? Nobody. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> nope. Nobody. Yo, quick post edit. This is me from the future. Um, I wanted to say two quick things about these young ladies real quick. First thing is these young ladies, they didn't obviously they didn't come on this show to listen to what people had to say and try to understand what they might have done wrong. These girls basically just came on this show to team up with each other and fight the entire world. That's that's basically what they came on the show to do. Um, not, not the pop, the balloon show, but this BM, this, uh, BM show. Matter of fact, let me pull it up. Um, BM talks to them. I should have put myself up here in the corner the whole time. That would have, man, I was, I was blocking this. I didn't even realize. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to get better at editing and, and, and recording these videos. But <clears throat> like I said, second thing is, um, I, I, I want you guys to definitely understand, okay, the Bible tells us not to argue or disagree with, like, foolish people, okay? Clearly, these girls, they they just stubborn. They're going to do what they want to do, all right? The reason why the Bible tells us not to do this, not to even argue or disagree or try to convince people who are fools or foolish people is because they ain't going to agree then they're not they not going to do what's right. Furthermore, you you being a person that has a good head on your shoulders, you're trying to tell them the right thing. You're trying to give them advice. You're trying to help them out, right? You're trying to be a good friend and help this person out. Well, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get frustrated trying to convince fools, foolish people, trying to convince people and argue and debate with foolish people. And guess what? They're going to go home. And they're going to they're going to get they're going to sleep like a freaking baby. They're going to go home and be happy, completely worry free. They ain't going to be worried about you. You are going to be mad, annoyed. You're going to be disappointed. Man, this person was they was talking crazy. This person, and just go instead of just, just go to sleep. Who cares? Who cares about what foolish people think? Who cares? Who cares? All you're going to do is stress yourself out. And you're going to die early because you're going you're gonna to stress yourself, your body out over, you know, you're going to stress your body out for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, arguing with foolish people. And that's not, that's going to be bad for you. And the foolish person is going to live to be 80 years old. <laughs> so that's why the Bible tells us not to even argue with foolish people in the first place. Um, I just wanted to say that real quick. It was on my mind. Uh. Hopefully that will help somebody definitely learn and understand how to how to identify foolish people when you see them just because they're beautiful and all oh, you know they bad. They can still be nincompoops. They're probably, you know, they're, people are just people, you know, they're beautiful nincompoops and they're they're hideous, ugly nincompoops. They're tall ones, short ones and stupid ones. You know, there's there's smart genius ones. There's clever ones. There's manipulative ones, you know. Nincompoops come in all shapes and sizes. Stupid people are, are, are beautiful or whatever. It doesn't matter. So uh, definitely, that's something. That's uh, definitely a skill, and that's definitely something from the Bible that I definitely wanted to. Uh, maybe it'll help somebody. All right, I, I talked a lot. So, all right, y'all. I'm about to go wash my gluteus maximus. Uh, enjoy the rest of the video. I'm out of here. We've seen a lot of people on the show who have like been a waste of time, or they've been immature or they've been silly or they had meant problems like something was just they just mentally just weren't right or something but it was never an entire lineup and it just so happened that this was an entire lineup and i think that's why these women had such a bad experience because everybody was cooking the entire line the whole lineup was getting destroyed at, like destroyed so this was just kind of one of those freak act like i guess you can call it a freak accident i don't know like, it's just a freakish occurrence that the whole lineup was a waste of time. Everybody was. So, that contributed to them having a bad experience. I think if it were, there were other good women on the show, and it was like two of these or three of these girls who was a waste of time on the show, I think their experience maybe would have been a little better. 
but the fact that they weren't finding no matches, ain't none of them like they just all together didn't like the guys that was on the show. But that was really their own fault that y'all didn't pick anybody. It's your own fault. You know, you did the same thing that you probably do in your hometowns. You do you do it in your DMs. They just going to continue to do this and and probably stay single. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm about to go to the gym. I love y'all. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. All right. Love y'all. Keep God first as always. All right. I'm outie. Cheers.